Today we are briefly explaining about single phase statcom, its design, the control algorithm, then finally the simulation of complete system using MATLAB. Statcom is a member of flexible AC transmission system family of devices. This is a power electronics based device used for the control of reactive power in a network and thereby increasing the stability of the network. It has the capability to absorb or generate reactive power in any network and it is always connected in shunt with the network. Now I will explain to you the basic idea of reactive power transfer between any two networks. Suppose we have two sources connected with a series reactance of value x in between. Suppose the voltage of first source is V1 angle 0 and voltage of second source is P2 angle delta. Now the equation for reactive power transfer between these two networks is given by Q is equal to V1 minus V2 into V2 all divided by x. So from the equation, it is clear that reactive power is directly proportional to the difference of the magnitude of two voltages. When V1 is greater than V2, then reactive power flows from V1 to V2. And when V2 is greater than V1, then reactive power flows from V2 to V1. Now I will explain to you the basic working of a statcom. Suppose we have a load, which is connected to the grid. Imagine that the load is a RL network. So as we know, the load will draw current from the grid, which is reactive in nature. So the current will lag the voltage by some angle. Now we are connecting a statcom at the same point where we connected the load. Assume that the statcom is generating reactive power, which is equal to the reactive power consumed by the load. But here the current leaves the voltage by 90 degree. So when we inject reactive power to the grid, the net reactive power taken from the grid will become zero. So the grid power is now purely active in nature. This is how we control the reactive power in any network using statcom. We can also improve the power factor of the network. The same theory applies when we connect an RC network to the grid. In that case, the statcom will absorb the reactive power, instead of generating it, so that net reactive power from the grid would become zero. This is the basic structure of a single phase statcom. It consists of a voltage source inverter, used to convert the DC input voltage to AC output voltage. The inverter can be realized using any power electronic devices such as MOSFET, IGBT, etc. A capacitor is used at the input to supply a constant voltage to the inverter. An inductor is used at the grid side for the filtering of high frequency components in the current generated by the inverter. Instead of L filter, we can also use an LCL filter for better filtering performance. Now I will explain what are the parameters we need to be sensed in order to implement the closed loop controller. First, we need to sense the voltage across the DC bus capacitor. This is to make a regulated constant voltage across the DC bus. Then we need to sense the grid voltage. Then we need to sense the current generated by the inverter. This is the current which we are actually going to control using statcom. Finally, we sense the current flowing through the load and we need to estimate the amount of reactive current actually present in the total load current. Now I will explain the controller block diagram of a single phase active rectifier. We start with phase locked loop. Output of phase locked loop will give one active component and one reactive component. The active component is aligned in phase with the grid. Reactive component is aligned 90 degrees out of phase with the grid. The next step is to find the amount of reactive current present in the load. This current decides the amount of current the statcom has to be generated. I will explain this in detail in the coming slide. Now I will start writing the controller. First, we need to find the error between actual sensed VDC and reference VDC. This error is then fed to a PI controller. The output of PI controller is multiplied with active component generated by the PLL. Now the estimated reactive component in the load current is multiplied with the reactive component generated by the PLL. The output of both the multiplier is then added and that will give the current reference. This current is then compared with the actual inverter current to find the error. This error is then fed to a PR controller. The output of PR controller is then added with the grid voltage. This will give the final reference voltage, and this voltage is used for the PWM generation. This is the PWM generation block. We are using unipolar PWM technique. So the reference voltage is compared with triangular carrier wave. Since we are using unipolar PWM, positive and negative references are compared. Output of each comparator is inverted and connected to each IGBT. Now I will explain you, how do we estimate the reactive component in the load current. Imagine that, we have a load which draws reactive current, connected to the grid. I am considering a RC load. 
Now the grid voltage Vg can be written as, Vg is equal to, Vm sin omega t, and load current can be written as, I load is equal to, Im sin omega t, plus 5. Now I will draw the phasor diagram for this condition. First I will mark the grid voltage, with amplitude Vm. Now I can draw the current phasor with amplitude Im, which is leading the voltage by an angle, phi. From the phasor diagram, we can clearly say that, active component of load current is, Im cos phi, which is in phase with the grid voltage. And the reactive component of load current is, Im sin phi, which leads the voltage by an angle, 90 degree. So our intention is to find the reactive component, that is, Im sin phi, from the voltage and current information. For that, first we need to multiply the current with, cos omega t, then we get, reactive component is equal to, Im sin omega t plus phi into, cos omega t. Now you will be wondering, from where I got this, cos omega t term. This term I obtained from, phase locked loop. From PLL, we get one active component, and one, reactive component. This cos omega t, that I used here is basically the, reactive component. Now solve the above equation, using the trigonometric identity, that is, sin a cos b is equal to, half, sin a plus b, plus, sin a minus b. So we will get reactive component as equal to, I m by 2 into, sin phi plus, sin 2 omega t, minus phi. The first term is a DC term, and the second term is a, high frequency term. Now use a low pass filter, to completely filter out the high frequency term. Then we get reactive component as, I m by 2 sin phi. Multiply this term with 2, then we get our reactive components as, I m sin phi. This is how we estimate the reactive component. This whole procedure I have represented as a block diagram. You can have a look into that. Now I will tell you, how to design the value of the inductor. The design of the inductor is based on the maximum permissible voltage drop across it. For this design, I am considering a maximum voltage drop of 5% of the grid voltage. Now let me give the specification of STATCOM. Maximum power is 2 kVA. The output voltage is 230 volt, at 50 Hz. Rated current is, 2 kVA divided by 230. That is 8.69 amps. Now the voltage drop across the inductor is equal to, 5% of 230. That is 11.5 volt. As we know, equation for the voltage drop across the inductor is I into XL. Equate this with 11.5. Substitute all the values, and then we will get inductance as, 4.2 milli Henry. With this, we conclude the discussion on design of STATCOM. Now we start doing the simulation.